Hey, what's up my friends? Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Victor and today I'm going to talk about some ways that you can attract into your life some high vibration friends or high vibration soulmate type of cool spiritual people that you jive and resonate with. It's interesting working with so many of you now how random themes just pop up at the same time. They talk about this with history, how inventions sometimes are created in multiple spots in the world, all pretty much at the exact same time. And I notice this anyway when I work with you guys. And one of the things I've noticed is a lot of you are all of a sudden very, possess a very sincere desire, almost like a readiness to finally meet some people that you could hang out with, that you like, that you can be yourself around, that you actually resonate with, where the relationship is balanced and good for both parties and works the way it could in, in like a synergistic type of way rather than one, rather than having the, the common human dysfunction and imbalance that can make a relationship impure and, and unsatisfying to the, the awakening spirit who is finding themselves with higher expectations now. So I've done most of these things a long time ago when I was in the process of le letting go of a lot of my toxic, I don't even want to call them toxic, but just all my like buddies like I used to roll around with. I, you know, a lot of you know I was a drug addict and what happened a lot of times is I would I would try to get clean. I'd go into rehab and I'd come out and I'd just start, i just, you know, I was 18 when I was struggling with this. I'd go back and hang out with my old buddies and I would just, I kept relapsing. And it's not their fault. I, I don't blame them. But there came a time where I just moved away. I knew I had to move away. And when I moved away, I found myself very lonely for a while. And I just wanted, I missed, even though I could no longer really resonate with my, my crew from the past, I, I had a nostalgic about that feeling of having that kind of camaraderie and just like that, that feeling of being part of a group and just it, having a, a, a fun time with a bunch of friends. It, it's really a, just a neat experience. A lot of you guys are going through this in your own way where your, your, your friends are just kind of fading out and your life's falling away. Some people you're choosing to stop hanging around and that creates a void, a very lonely void. But now, it's more and more people every day going through a spiritual awakening. People who are being a higher conscious, loving person on the spiritual path is borderline trendy now. So it's not unrealistic to expect that you could go out and actually find some cool people. They're, they're probably in your area now, whereas in the past I might have said, you know what, just suck it up. You're a, you're, you're, you chose this lonely path, but now it's not gonna, I don't think it has to be so lonely. So I'm gonna share some things that'll help you attract some friends in a more accelerated way, in a very proactive way. One of them, as I kind of mentioned, is I, I let go of toxic relationships. For the, for the primary reason that if you hang out with, if you settle, you're basically saying two conflicting things to the universe. You're saying, I want new friends. I want high vibration friends. And I'm also willing to settle. I don't actually really think I deserve them, so I'm going to take what I can get because I, I've lost faith. That's two conflicting signals and that can very easily block your, it's like with, it's like uh, with any, anything with the awakening, you oftentimes do have to let go of what's no longer serving you to make room, energetic room for something else to come in. So that's step one. That's the first thing you have, you have to do and perhaps the hardest. I can talk about affirmations and stuff, but that's, that's kind of easy. Anyone can do that. It's not so emotional, but exhibiting behaviors that represent that you finally are ready for a greater relationship knowing that temporarily you'll be without anybody perhaps that's hard that's hard to make yourself lonely like that and yet necessary so give that give that a serious look i'm not saying this as a as a one size fits all blanket statement you got to look at all your friends no 
But if there's people you're if there are people you're hanging around that are not a match, the relationships are stale and unsatisfying and you're clinging to them because you just don't like the feeling of being alone, then that's something you're gonna wanna consider and that will block it. That will block your the, uh, the influx of new cool people. Number two is to work on yourself. Make yourself a vibrational match for the people who fit the ideal in your mind. A lot of times we expect to meet some people, but other people that, again, the vision we have of them in our mind are much at a much higher frequency than we are. It's like when I was in recovery, I, I, I could reference this a lot of times, but there was, uh, I had this uh, therapist, and he, in regard, that's a tangent. Regardless, a lot of, a lot of, a commonly accepted notion in the AA, NA, 12 step sort of uh, scene is that it's not wise to immediately seek out a relationship right when you are freshly clean because you're a mess. If you're just now coming off of hard drugs or, or binge drinking or something, then you obviously got some issues to deal with. And so if you immediately start trying to find someone, you're gonna find a match. You're gonna find a toxic match for yourself. So if you, so the, you're gonna attract better quality people naturally, energetically, when you make yourself a worthy companion, whether it be a friend or a lover. When you make you, when you be the best you can be and work on yourself, you will just you will have a higher vibration, and just by the law of attraction, you will attract higher vibrational friends, family, not family, obviously, uh, soulmate type people, just relationships in general. That's what I was trying to say. So work on yourself. What I did when I was in, when I when I was on this path, this ascent, this this path of self discovery that started a long time ago for me, like 18, 19 years old. I took the whole self development thing incredibly seriously. I would wake up. I had three. I had the stack of books. I would go through different meditations. I'd read out of like the the AA Big Book. I had like two different like daily meditation affirmation books. I would meditate, I would journal, I'd write my to-do list. All like 18, 19 years old, I would really force myself out of my comfort zone to go get a job and do things that were challenging to me. I forced myself to go and talk and try to hang around people who I thought would be a good influence on me. And I, I exercised, I ate very healthy. I went to bed at a certain time, I woke up at a certain time. I worked a full-time exhausting valet job and I went to the gym every single day. I was just, I took it very seriously. And as a result, healthy people on that same path, we, they were, they, they just kind of popped into my life. We were drawn to each other. It was very easy and natural. Number three, another hard and simple one, a reason people might not be meeting other people is but actually try, like put yourself out there. There was this one guy, I was working with my, my lovely wife's brother-in-law, I, I was a trainer and I used to train him. Um, uh, and he was my always- My brother, your brother-in-law, my wife's brother-in-law. Yeah, my brother-in-law, okay. Thanks for the clarification there, buddy. No, I'm just kidding. Um, see what you did? I used to train my brother-in-law. Yeah, she made me lose my train of thought, actually. Anyway, he would always complain. He would always say, oh, I'm single, woe is me. He'd always have that attitude. And I was like, Chris, what, what do you do, man? Do you, why aren't you on those dating sites or anything? Oh, well. So it's like, yeah, if you want to meet people, there, you could be proactive and have a, a pretty easy time sifting through lots of personalities quickly. I know for relationships anyway, there's all those different dating sites, some of my buddies use them. And in this day and age, if we're locked into our little predictable pattern, there's not a lot, there's not as much room for the potential of new people to, to uh, come into our lives as if we put ourselves out there. So if this was important to me, I would probably seek out like, I don't know, yoga classes or you know some something that you jive with, whatever, you know. I would go to mixed martial arts classes sometimes and meet people. Just whatever you like to do, go go and put yourself out there with the intention of 
finding some cool relationship at the same time simultaneously working on yourself letting go of the old ones it all kind of works in harmony it's all just a big statement and demonstration more more powerfully to the universe that not only do you want this but you're really doing everything in your power to make it happen one of the ways I did this as I mentioned I kind of sought people out I would go to the AA meetings and I just I would as uncomfortable as it made me I would go and I would just start talking to people and that was so hard it was so unlike me so challenging for me but again I I don't know where all that motivation came from but I did it and it worked so the law of attraction and like our beliefs that are setting our intentions that can only go so far with all that said I would recommend utilizing a lot of the cool law of attraction types of techniques because they do work and they work well they work fast they're working better and more efficiently almost in a freaky way than ever before you could recite affirmations what I've been doing a lot with a lot of success is I don't have an example here but I write down my goals I have like four or five just general life improvement goals that I write down at least one time a day one time each it takes me a couple minutes and just the, the writing them down the stopping of my day and focusing and reminding myself on a daily basis of that intention they what I wrote down pops in my head like one of the things I'm doing it for an example is I'm trying to lean out trying to like shed some body fat right so I, I wake one of the things I write down is I am 170 pounds I write down my weight in the present tense so when it's like I'm tempted with my kid like eating pizza back there it's like no no, no. I weigh 100 that, that will that those affirmations are triggered into your mind when you're about to do something that would maybe contradict them that's one of the ways it works another it also works in pretty mysterious ways where, where opportunities in your life just kind of arranges itself at least it seems to that help you line up with situations that are in alignment with what you're writing down what you're intending so I want to share a quick personal example so you know this is after I shot that video right walking into the gym and I noticed uh, just some people I passed by, they were having a conversation about something that piqued my interest about music and working out and stuff. It was, it was like a conversation, you know, I would have liked to have gotten in on. And that's kind of an example of like the law of attraction at work. It's not that I, I can't say for sure if I created that. I'm, I'm not saying that, obviously, but I noticed it where without those, the, the programming, and even a little bit just from talking about it for 20 minutes on a video it already was enough to to peak to catch my attention kind of in a synchronistic way so that's in my opinion like more like realistically how it tends to work and yet the, the effect is the same because you know not having not done that my I don't think my brain would have like would have caught that and I wouldn't have been alerted to that so a lot of it I think is like it makes us more alert to potential possibilities and poten uh, opportunities to what I was looking for that align with that we're putting out. Just wanted to kind of share that, kind of caught my eye, felt it was relevant. I gotta go, peace. Lastly, I'm gonna make this quick, my little buddy Bash back there. He's getting over being sick, so he's uh, getting a little fussy. It's B okay, five, become okay with being alone. It's a big paradox, I realize, but a lot of times when we say to the universe, I need such and such, it will withhold that from you to show you that you don't need it. The sooner you can become okay and comfortable being alone, not having external validation for you being worthy, it will, it will at least, at the very least, avoid that that very common like law of attraction type block where you insist on needing something you obsess about it too much in a very needy and unbalanced way it blocks it I would find this phenomenon happening with some of my personal training clients people that would take all of my advice and they would execute it to perfection but almost in a borderline again needy and neurotic way and even though everything on paper was flawless 
they would not lose weight. They would block themselves. They would, they would somehow miraculously stifle their forward progress. And I've, I've experienced this in my life. I'm sure you can relate as, as well a little bit if you're honest with yourself. I've I've been needy and and then wonder, why is, why do I not get this? I, it's all I really want. It's just not happening. Well, because the whole theme of the Earth game is self-empowerment. And, and again, you guys understand that I'm kind of rambling. <laughs> so anyways, I just kind of wanted to put out my thoughts out there for those of you who feel lonely and feel at the same time ready and deserving of meeting some cool higher vibration friends this is what I would do this is something again a lot of these things in a sense worked for me in the past when I let go of those friends when I was when I was hanging out and I went to Florida and I started on this path some of the best friends I to this day have ever had in my entire life just popped in my life and ironically became my roommates and out of 300 people this one guy Shia this Shia he, he moved in with me, he was my, my bunk mate. And we were like two peas in a pod. It was just such a, he was just such a good friend. We both were allowed to be ourselves completely and let our guard down. We called each other out on our bullshit, but yet we just had this genuine, like a, just like a brotherly love for each other. I met another guy, his name is Guy actually. This one real nice guy um, that I remember, like one of my first days, he was like, hey, what's up kid? He was just the friendliest, just a, such a, like a freaking walking angel, just a super, super nice human being. He went out of his way to make sure everybody in his path was okay and he just had the energy. And then that guy ended up moving in with me and we, we still talk to this day, we're still good friends. I consider these few people that I met, it honestly makes me kind of sad. They're not in my life now, you know, we kind of went our separate ways, but they were like real soulmate type of people. And it was just such a beautiful thing to have that. I have such nostalgia looking back at that. So anyways, I hope this all, I hope this helps you guys. Have an amazing day, I will speak to you tomorrow. Sorry I missed you on Monday. It's, today's Monday, I'm shooting this, but I've just been so busy. As many of you know, I'm still traveling. And we had, we had a, sick, a sick kid. And it's just my life has been kind of crazy right now. But anyway, I'm back. I'll see you all tomorrow. Have an amazing day. Thank you for bearing with me. Peace.